Is that yummy? It is yummy. Elizabeth from the Nail Hub. Hi, guys. Today, we've decided to join forces yeah. with a gel pro and an acrylic pro. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the differences. Let's get started. So Liz and I were talking, and she has told me that even though she's a gel expert, she's never actually done acrylic. Never. So we thought we'd get together and play with acrylic. Mm -hmm. We thought it'd be fun to sort of discuss the differences between gel and acrylic. Application from sculpting to the finishing. So I have a friend to help us out today. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my God. <laughs> Isn't that kind of... I've been wanting to see one of these in person. I went to a trade show and this company, Red Iguana, mm -hmm. put one aside. So when I came by Max's booth where she was stationed, she gave me one. Mm -hmm. So I've always wanted one. I wasn't quite sure where to get it. She actually dipped her hand into a mold. So this is actually uh, a This mold. is April's hand? Yeah. No, I don't know if her name's April. Yeah, April Ryan. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you know her. Yeah, April oh. Ryan. She knows everybody. <laughs> so she gave me this, and it's her actual hand. She has beautiful hands. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Look at how long her fingers are. I know. And how narrow and long. Her... This is what nail technicians but is nerd it kinda, out on. Is it like jiggly? Feel it. Ooh, Go for it. Ooh, I don't know if I like this or not. Oh, it's kind of weird. You're going to be cool. holding it. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Oh, wow. It's firm. She put wire in it so you can bend it like a real hand. Oh, my God. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Because it works like a little hand. I mean, usually we get those little tips. Yeah. So these really are in place of working on real hands. They look like it and they feel like it. So that's what we're going to play with today. That is so cool. Sure is. I love it. So the first step when we do nails is prepare the natural nail bed. Right. And basically with acrylic and gel, you basically prepare it the same way. You want to buff it all up. You want to clean it. You want to get rid of the cuticle and you prepare the nail for the adhesion of the product. And we use a pH bonder and then you put some sort of primer or in gel's case, you put a base coat on. And then the next step would be applying the product to the nail bed. And that's where we're going to start. So I've got some product here. I've got I'm the excited. acrylic and I've got the monomer. Now brushes is where we sort of start. That's where we differ right out the gate is our brushes. So this would be a gel brush, would you say? Yeah, yeah looks like one. Mm -hmm. Kind of a big one, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Yeah. So I'm always amazed because look at the size of acrylic brushes. Oh, wow. Look at the size difference. So what size would these be? This would be about an eight. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's a really great size to start with when you're working. Oh, that's good. So when you see this one, mm -hmm. what size would you call that? Probably a six. You say six. Maybe a four. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you say that's a bit bigger. A little bit bigger just because it has kind of that cat tongue shape to it. It's a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. Some people like to use a little bit thinner of a brush and a little bit longer. So you get that kind of you flowy know, frosting the cake mm, type of. Gotcha. Yeah. I knew nothing about that. Now in gel brushes, can you get all sorts of different shapes? Yes, okay. absolutely. You can get round, square, pointy. Oh, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So in acrylic brushes, you can also get square and round and mm -hmm. pointy and cat tongue mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, which is great. I'm really partial to the oval. I actually started my career on a square mm -hmm. and used it for years. And then I tried the oval with the point and I love it. I awesome. haven't gone back. I find the size quite alarmingly different. So when I'm ever handed a gel brush, I'm like, ooh! Yeah. Well, I've <laughs> seen people use those acrylic brushes that are huge. Yeah. Looks like something you'd paint a wall with. I gotta do a video on that because oh, okay. that's not really. That's not a how great it really idea. goes. And there's a lot of reasons why a big brush is not recommended. Right. right. But this seems I'm, like it would give you a lot of control. It does. And that's okay. why I like the smaller brush, especially like if that. you're a student and you're learning. So six or an eight when you're learning is great. And a 10 is workable as well. Anything bigger than that is a little bit much. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start. I'm going to put the gel brush down. And I do like a cap. Now, when you cleanse a gel brush, it's very different. Mm -hmm. um, you cleanse it with what? Just clear gel. I never put alcohol right. or acetone on my brushes. See, that's a good thing to know because as mm -hmm. acrylic artist, I always clean my brush with the monomer, yep. which is great. But mm -hmm. if I have any problems, I do clean it with acetone. Oh, I don't really? care if it ruins it or, and it won't one or two times. Mm -hmm. So when I get the gel brush, mm -hmm. I want to clean it with a liquid like alcohol because that's what I'm used to doing. Yeah, and you but, can if you want. But it's right. best to leave a little bit of clear gel on your brushes and just squeegee off the excess. Gotcha. Keeps everything together. Oh, that's a good tip. And keeps the bristles from getting dried okay. out. Yeah. So I'll discuss this now in case she does it. When and if you get acrylic inside there and it hardens, mm. you want to get a little cup of acetone and you can rest it inside there and the acetone will take the acrylic off of your hardened brush. Otherwise, your brush is destroyed. It's toast. Oh, wow. And on that note, if you leave any gel in your gel brush, you don't want to leave it in the sunlight. 
right? Because it will harden in the brush. Yes, so the cats are way. important. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get started. I'm so excited for yeah. this for Jill. You know, we have we love each other, but yeah. we we kind of are snobby with each other sometimes. I'm a little bit of a gel snob. Mm -hmm. I'm not and gonna lie. I'm, say I'm an acrylic snob. That's <laughs> very true. We are like that, aren't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I have really crossed over, and I've really learned a lot about gel. And there's so many amazing things that I love about it. Yeah. And so we're gonna show you a few things about acrylic. The number one thing with acrylic really is the liquid to powder ratio is mm -hmm. crucial. Yep. Now with gel, you pick up the stuff and yep. you sort of sway it on yep. and you don't have a time factor. Wow, that hand looks so real. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> One thing I did say to the girl who gave me this, April, you said, mm -hmm. do you see her little fingerprints on there? Really? Yeah, but I think that they have done something to get rid of it. That'd be kind of weird. People could be using yeah. your fingerprints. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Which would be a very bad thing. It's cool. It's creepy. It's creepy. It's creepy it's cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we have a real fake hand. Okay. Liquid to powder ratio is like crucially important. Okay. When you're doing it. Now with gel, it's a bit different. You don't have to wait for it to cure. But when you do liquid to powder, as soon as you put the liquid to powder together, mm -hmm. it starts to cure. So it's a time factor. And you've got to somewhat hurry. So I'm going to have to hurry up. <laughs> so terrible to say someone that because you don't want to hurry up. So get with the acrylic program. Yeah, but I, when I'm teaching, I you need to make lots of mistakes. Okay. It's the only way we can learn. So I'm not looking for any nail structure to be given here. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for you to build a nail. I just want you to play with the liquid to powder. Cool. And the hand is simply just something we can do within that parameter. But so the liquid to powder is so important. And so sometimes I'll just get a piece of paper and get them to do the liquid to powder ratio and just do ball after ball mm. after bead after bead after bead, whatever you want to call it. Okay. We're just going to have fun with the hand. So sometimes I'll just put the tip of the brush in to mm. gather a bead. You don't want a giant bead. You just want to lay the bead in 1,000, 1, 1,000, 2, about two or three seconds. And sometimes I'll click it off like that. Mm. And you literally just release your bead. And this is when it starts to cure. And this is when you just want to flatten down a little bit. I'll try to flatten near the cuticle and you see I won't go too close just to show you. I'm glad we got this pink color so you can see the difference. The smaller the bead you work with, the easier it is to control. And then you can just sort of, there's a sparkle. Must have been a sparkle we used in the past couple weeks. There's always glitter in everything. Yes. And sometimes you can clean your brush and get a little bit more monomer on it and kind of soften things a little bit, mm. but not always. It's not always the case. And the way this brush is shaped. So the advantage of a acrylic brush over a gel brush is this is more of a sweeping motion. Mm -hmm. This is more of a padding motion. Okay. So this bulky part in here is quite dense and it's firm, it's strong. So, so it helps push your product down. Mm. So. Before I let you try it again, I'm going to do one more example. Mm -hmm. So if I get a bead, not a big bead, when I release that bead, I'll clean my brush, get rid of the stuff that's on there, and I start, see how I use the body of the brush a bit? Mm, okay. To flatten. So it's basically a flattening motion. I notice when I teach most gel artists, they literally want to move it around, like uh -huh. you, naturally. Frosting makes, a cake. Yeah, yeah, that makes total sense. Because yeah. when I get a hold of gel, the first time I was learning how to use it, I was padding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we bring what we know to the table, right? Totally. So how long would you say you have before You've it starts to harden? have got about 20 seconds. Really? Yeah, which I don't like to normally tell a student that because anybody who's on the clock like that is going <gasps> to... Yeah, it's yeah. not very much time. So if you take a little bit of a uh, bead that's a little runnier, mm -hmm. it can give you a little more time, but you're also chasing it around more. Oh, okay. Right? So if you're doing a bead that's more of a perfect liquid to powder ratio bead, mm -hmm. you can see how he's sitting there. Mm. So he's just waiting for you to tell him what to do. So is that how you tell Pat. that it's a perfect bead? So how, for a beginner, how would I look at it and go, okay, that's a perfect mix ratio? Yeah. If the bead is sitting there and not running, mm -hmm. that's a great question. And I'll show you a perfect bead. 
See how it released off your brush mm, quite cleanly? Yep. That's a pretty perfect. You can see it's moving a little. Yeah. But it's movable. Oh, right? Okay. So that would be a good beat because now I can flatten and push around and it's, and it's still running. movable. This would be a not happy bead. See that? Oh, super wet. You can still work that. Okay. But it's not as happy and the liquid to powder ratio is so off that it might take quite a time to cure. Mm. It can even cure. If it's so off, it can cure even after they've left. Oh, wow. For a few days, it can be a little painful because it's still trying to cure. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to try? Sure. <laughs> it's kind of a little scary at first, isn't it? It is a little yeah. scary. I'm going to try and do a perfect bead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It took me years to learn how to do perfect beads. Yep. So I'm not going to hold you to it. But should it's I just fun to play. Yeah. Should I pick a different finger? Or should yeah, I do pick a okay. different finger. Okay. Now I'm just going to readjust the stuff over here yep. for you. Yeah. Thank you. So Because you, you're right-handed. You want to yep. keep everything close together. Okay. I'm just going to, just for aesthetics, snap it out of there. Make a nice, clean little powder Alrighty. for you. I'm just looking at how long and elegant her fingers are. I know. And she's got little teeny tiny yeah. nail beds. Look, look at her thumb in comparison to my little short fat one. She's got a nice <laughs> hand. She does have a nice hand. It's kind of weird touching April, you know? It is. It is kind of weird now that I've met her. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weird, but it's cool. So we actually met in California at a trade show. At Long Beach. That's, yeah, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. And you have the Nail Hub. Yeah. And you invited me on your podcast. That was so fun. We really connected because we have a lot of the same industry viewpoints, which right. is a great interview. If you want to catch that, uh, Karen Mann will put a link in the description below. That was fun. I really enjoyed that. I want to do that again. I do too. Well, I can't be happier to have you on. Let's get back to nails. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm just going to dip this in here, right? Yeah. And I remove most of the liquid like yeah. that. And then what did you say? 1,000, 1, 1,000, 3, and a little flick. And you don't have to tap it off. Okay. That's really little, good. A little tappy tap. Yeah. And don't go too close to the cuticle. Okay. So I'll just start there. Release. And Look release. at you. Yes. Now just wipe it off there okay. a little bit. Wipe off. And now just... Just yeah, pat push it. down slowly. Give a little elbow grease. Okay. Push right in. Oh. You can see it moving. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, you really have to push it. You do. You gotta oh. give it some attitude. Oh yeah. gosh. You got it. I gotta make this my biatch. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now you can see it flowing to the cuticle a little bit on that side. So see oh. if you can move it with your brush. Oh, yeah. Because nice. wherever it is, it will stay. It will harden. Okay. You're doing it. Oh. Yep. Okay. This is hard. That's good. Okay. So put a little elbow grease. Push a little push harder. A little bit harder. Flatten it out. Okay. And yeah. you can flatten out the cuticle area too. Okay. And just pull, wipe, pull. swipe. There you go. This is yep. interesting. Yep. Now pull and swipe. Pull, pull and swipe. Pull towards you. Okay. And press down. And press down. I feel like I'm a little bit of a pansy with the pressing. No, and the actually, padding. you did really good. Doesn't look as good yeah. as yours. Well, of course not. <laughs> I got 32 years. You're probably only 32. <laughs> oh, and it does it does kind of move. I've got a yeah, little bit over that's right. here. You can still, I can stick my finger in it. It'll still move. So you really? can still push you with your brush a little if you want to try okay. it. Okay. And you're going to have an idea of how much. Oh, and you said I could, oh, so I could do it maybe a little bit it's to too try late and now. clean. Oh, too late. Yeah, too late. Oh, geez. I really got to hurry up. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. if this was at the cuticle, yeah. it's too thick. Too bulky. But I got to tell you, mm -hmm. cuticle work takes years to master it does it really does yeah whether you're using acrylic or gel it takes yeah. quite some time to yeah. master so if i were you you did excellent take you another did. bead your bead ratio was perfect yes take another bead ratio okay but i would make a smaller bead which means you mean less liquid okay and about the same time in there maybe about a little the less same time. Okay. and you want to put that bead right about there and then you're going to pat him closer to the cuticle and then pull back. Just basically what you did. Okay. Yeah. And then do you usually tip the finger down when you work on the mm -hmm. cuticle? You just leave it like I it is? I don't. And the reason why I don't is because my liquid to powder ratio, I'm always trying to get it right. Mm. They only do that when your liquid to powder ratio is a little bit runny and it's running. Oh, okay? okay. So that's not ideal. When you do the cuticle, sometimes you want to add a little bit more monomer or less powder because you want it a little bit more pliable. Okay. Right. But when you're doing this area for structure, you don't need that. You're really just pushing around because the bead that you create near the cuticle you do want it to soften a little for you because you want that you want really to melt smooth. yeah that's a good word okay yeah. i love that yeah okay perfect yeah. so play a little now okay. the idea is if you mess this up no matter yeah right no matter yeah we're just messing up april's hand yes we're just <laughs> we're it's not a real person so we're not messing anybody up. and that's why we're doing this demo on a fake hand and okay. not a real person because you need to mess up before you learn how to do that. That's so true. Yeah, before you transfer it to a real person. So true. I've done that many times with gel yes. nails in my past as well. 
One question I had mm. for you is I've seen people where they just smash their brush into the bottom of their jar. Yeah. Why do people do that? I wouldn't do that. And the only reason why I could say they might do it is because maybe it's a new brush and there is a bit of a powder, a packing powder that comes mm. in your brush. And maybe they're not releasing that. You should release that first and then you get it nice and wet. But to smash it in there like that, I wouldn't do that mm -hmm. because you're going to change the shape of the brush. The bristles might go, you know, crazy. Afraid, yeah. We don't want that. Okay. All so right. respect the brush. So I'm going to try and remove a little bit more like that and just a little, I'm going to try a little bead, a little wet bead. Okay, that might be a little wet. That's good. Like that? Yep. Okay. Clean. And then, yep. Press, press. Now see if you can press enough to make it quite smooth in that cuticle area. Okay. Oh my gosh. You're doing it. Oh, I touched the skin yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you're doing good. Okay. Now you're pulling back just what you're supposed to do. Oh. That's fantastic. Oh, this is a little messy. Yeah, that's really I'm good though. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Wow, this is a lot harder than it looks. Yeah. It's like watching someone playing tennis. If they're really good at it, it's like, oh, yeah, I could play with them. Right. And then you get on the court and <laughs> you're chasing the thing around everywhere. Yeah. So I get that. And when I watch somebody do that's really good, you're like, oh, wow, I could do that. But when you actually do it, you really appreciate the mm -hmm. craft that's behind this. Totally. Good job. Thank that you. That's great. So wh where do you start? So if I'm going to do a whole nail start to finish, right? And I've seen those videos where they put a giant bead with yeah. a giant brush mm -hmm. right here and let yeah, it run sure. down. And obviously that's not exactly the proper way to do it. So how do you break up the nail? I mean, where do you start? Everybody's individual. Mm. Um, I start usually at the cuticle and then I build my arch and I come right to the end. Mm. If I'm doing a glitter design, for example, like lots of glitter and stuff, I sometimes will start at the tip and work toward because I'm actually creating the design. Oh. Depend on the design that you're okay. doing. Yeah. But there's really no right or wrong as far yeah. as where you start. No. Oh, cool. No. And the people that do take those giant blobs and do it, they're working it. They're working it good. I mean, mm -hmm. they work it well. Mm -hmm. um, if you can do it, everybody kind of wants to get to the one ball method. Right. But honestly, that's not important. I've seen really good nail technicians do it in seven balls. It doesn't matter how many beads or balls that you do it in. Um, it can be more efficient if you're doing it in one ball and going crazy. Right. Um, if you get to that level, great. But mm -hmm. whatever how you do it, it does not mean that you're lesser of a tech if you're doing it in one in ball one, or seven. One bead. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, and I guess with acrylic, I mean, you're trying to maintain control over the product. So you eliminate a lot of the need for perfecting around the cuticle or mm -hmm. stuff like that, right? Yeah. And anything that you do mess up, you can sculpt away mm -hmm. as you can with gel. It's basically the same. I love so that. the only fighting that you're doing is between gel and acrylic is mm -hmm. time. You're just trying to perfect it before it cures on you. Yeah, that is totally different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This is the weirdest thing I've ever done. It's like pushing on gum. Yes. Kind of. Yep. Gum that dries. You've got a really good delicate touch, I must say. Oh, you're doing I'm, really good. Little, I'm just a, I'm a gel girl. We, mm -hmm. we don't push on our product. Well, and I can see a lot of the motion that you're doing when you're pulling away. You're really good at that because we do that in gel. Yep. And you're doing that really good. Yep. That's great. Oh, my gosh. I'm trying to make her nail look yep. somewhat decent. Huh? <laughs> Not bad. Okay, so now take the bead on the end mm -hmm. and create, do that coffin shape and build it right out to the end. Okay. And does it matter if you, I mean, should I brush it backwards? You can do or that. I worked with a girl once that she, I've seen I saw videos. her do that. And I thought, what is she doing? That was not the way I was taught. Interesting. And it's very rare, but you know what? Who cares if it works? Hmm. If it's your style, it worked for her. She did a great job. Yeah. Okay. Oh my, that might be a little wet. Maybe. No, that's okay. It's all right. Yeah, you can work that. So if you ever notice sometimes when you're dabbing and you're trying to shape uh -huh. that your product comes back up to your brush and it's kind of sticky, that means your brush is dirty. You just oh. want to dab it, get rid of it, okay. and then you can go back. And oh, that's good doing. to know. Yeah. All you're doing really is sculpting this bead into the shape that you want it to be, oh. such as gel. We're just sculpting that into the shape we want it to be. With gel, you've got all the time to play with it, get it right, but it does run on you. With acrylic, it's curing as it goes, so you got to hurry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, we're all trying to get to the same nail. We're all trying to build a beautiful, structurally sound nail. Absolutely. And the structure is always the same, whether it's gel or acrylic. Yep. We just get there a different way. Now, does it matter if it's completely dry in between my, my no, layers? No, that's a great question. No. Oh, okay. No. So I can just keep putting... You can keep putting it on. Well, she's going to have a nail a mile thick, but that's all right. <laughs> but that's where sculpting comes in, right? Oh, and you're right. It does stick. Look yeah. at that. Yeah, it doesn't like that. Interesting. I like this, you know, it's kind of interesting. You can kind of just play with it a little bit yeah. and mush it around. Yeah, it's like adult Play-Doh. It is like adult Play-Doh. Yeah. Oh, I'm making a mess here. Oh, so I have okay. a question for you. Yeah. 
Mine ended up a little bit lumpy, of course, because I'm, mm, I'm new to this totally, acrylic Actually, thing. that's not near as lumpy as what you'd expect for a first person. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh. We used to call them turtles. They used to be like... like turtles? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. I love that. Mm -hmm. So does it matter? I mean, I, obviously, we're going to finish file this anyway, but is the goal to get to the point where it's a little bit smoother? I mean, what's your opinion on I, that? Ultimately, that is the goal. We all would like it to become, when you're sculpting it, as close as to the finished look as possible. Mm. But that's the idea of sculpting. That's what we do. So... Honestly, it doesn't matter. As long as the colors blend together and it's so smooth, you can sculpt it and file it whichever way you want and it'll all turn out the same. So it doesn't really matter unless you're working with white. Mm. If I'm doing a French white, which we don't do so much French whites anymore, but when you're doing a French white, you need to take it all the way down on the surface because if you blend whites together, they don't really blend together very well. Oh, you can tell the difference. Well. Yeah, you can. If you leave it too much time in between, even going from a pinky and back to another hand, you can see a little difference in color. Wow. Yeah, so white, you kind of want to you make sure you get pretty smooth. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And then how thin is too thin? Everyone talks about, you know, in gel, we say credit card thickness at the tip. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I've heard that if you do acrylic too thin, it cracks. So what's the, the ultimate? You know what? Our natural nails break because they're too thin for the environment of whatever we're doing. Mm. So anything thicker than that can be a little stronger, right? So clients always want their nails thin, but if we make them as thin as natural nails, they're going to break. <laughs> True. So they have to be a little bit thicker than natural nails. And of course, the longer they are, the thicker they need to be in that stress area to sustain mm -hmm. that length. So from what I understand, acrylic is stronger than gel if you take it size for size like if you make a thin a nail of a gel and thin acrylic mm -hmm. the acrylic will last a little bit longer because the gel is not as quite as strong mm -hmm. but if you build it structurally sound you shouldn't have any problems with either of them interesting so if any nail built too thin will definitely break if you're doing something to stress it something's got to give yeah so it's either going to be the nail or you're going to break the nail plate mm -hmm. which of course you don't want to do that Down so to something's got to give yeah yeah. yeah. So yes, you can, it can be too thin and it can break. That's not a product issue. Mm -hmm. That's a structure of a technique of a technician issue. Got it. Right. Yep. There's so many elements <sighs> to building the perfect nail. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, but yours is, I mean, of course. Well, yeah. I mean, and I wasn't even trying to make it smooth. I was just trying to show you. And that's what this is about. We just want to play with the product and see yeah. the difference between the gel. Yeah. And I like I like that you're explaining this mix ratio thing because we don't have this in gel. It's already mixed It's together. already done for you, which is great. It's already done for you. You can just focus yeah. on the structure and the build of it. Yeah. Oh, that is so interesting. So, yeah, put that right in the stress, and yeah. you're, now you're building the arch. Now, with gel, sometimes we can turn it upside down, and because it's self-leveling, it'll naturally build an arch. But with acrylic, we can't do that. You've got to really have to build it. Build it up. And, and look how you're making it so smooth, <gasps> right? Oh, gosh. You're yeah. actually making that, what you were worried about, nice and smooth. And just, but see, I might be taking off a little bit too much. You are, and acrylic artists, even if you have no gel background, mm -hmm. we, we still do that when we're learning. We yeah. take quite a bit of it off. But that's part of the learning process. Yeah, this is so fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? It is really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let me take a look at it sideways and maybe we can do a little bit of sculpting. Mm -hmm. So I want to look at the nail all different angles to make sure you've got the thickness to be able to, to sculpt it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter how bumpy and lumpy it is. It only matters when you're sculpting and you find a dip that you should have put a blump there, okay. right? Yeah. That's the only time it matters. Awesome. So we want to be able to make sure everything's there so then we can sculpt it. So if we want to keep this particular shape, I would add another little bead right here. You can even see the tip a little bit through mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. I would add another bead there and make it, you know, an even in thickness all the way across. And then we can start sculpting. Perfect. So go ahead. Awesome. And I'm making kind of divots in my acrylic over here. So how do you get your pot to be smooth again? It, you just, I just went like this. Oh, and you just tap it. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, you don't really have to drag and you don't have to dab like that. Yeah. I just hold it for a second to get an even soak. Okay. Because my theory is, and I don't know how correct I am, but if I dab it too many times, I think I would have different levels of cure time on each dab might be mm. a little bit different. So you just kind of hold it there. I just hold it. I yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah, I just hold it. That's good to know. Yeah. Look at that. That's beautiful. That's perfect. Is it? Yep. Oh, good. Yeah, you did that really good. Oh, good. I don't feel so bad then. I find when I'm teaching, the more time I spend discussing liquid to powder ratio mm -hmm. to the student, the better they off are right out of the gate. Yeah. They make better nails. It makes so great. much sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I can do gel with my eyes closed, yes. but this is yeah. totally different. Yeah. yeah cool. Totally understand that. 
So it takes about 60 seconds to fully cure okay. that we can start sculpting. So you'd be kind of going through all the fingers as you go. Yeah. And okay. then, of course, I go um, from pinky to thumb, mm-hmm. thumb to pinky, both mm-hmm. hands. Mm-hmm. And then by the time I come back to the next hand, everything's totally cured. I put everything away and then I can start sculpting. Cool. So let's do that. So I'm just double checking our brush and this is a mistake that we commonly make. Oh, See that? how much product I left in there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, if I didn't catch that, which often you don't because you get busy and you want to finish the client's hand, mm-hmm. you might not check it completely. But how you get it out is I twirl and twirl and twirl until I get it out. Or I will take a cuticle stick and I'll try to nudge it out. I can take a little glass of acetone and I can just hold it in there for a few seconds. Now, some people might be very upset that I'm doing this because acetone can be harsh on your bristles. Okay. But I don't have the patience to try to take it out all the time. And just a little quick soak Mm -hmm. does help. So I just twirl the brush and make sure that I get my product out and then I will condition it back in the monomer. So So like gel, we leave gel on our brushes with this monomer. Okay. Same thing, I'll leave it in my monomer. Right? I'll just condition the brush with the monomer and then I'll put the cap on. Right? I love that. Yeah. But I will store it this way down mm. because if I store it this way up, Everything unlike your gel, down. the monomer will drain back into the barrel of the brush. And then when you bring it back out, it may drizzle some old and ye- usually yellow kind of product and it contaminate all your nails and you may not notice it right away. Oh my gosh. So you do want to store it this way down. Okay. Good to know. Mm hmm. So we're very similar. There's little differences, Mm -hmm. but it's actually very similar, really. Yeah. Okay, so this little guy that you've built, you did a really good job. He's a little chubby. That's (laughs) great. I think I'm breaking your finger, look. Oh my gosh, I love this. (laughs) It is pretty cool. It's very realistic, but I definitely am breaking her finger. I like that it feels kind of firm, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, solid. Yeah, I was talking to them and they said, don't bend it too many times over and over because of the wire inside can mm. break. Yeah, which makes perfect sense. Okay, so when I want to see if acrylic is ready, oh. I'll just do that sound. Otherwise, if it's not, it just sounds like... So nothing. it's supposed to make a little clicky noise. Yeah. I mean, if you want to just check, I mean, obviously it'll be done if you do all 10 fingers, but right. you just kind of do a little click. A little tappy tap. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, if I'm working on a person, don't forget to score your little edges of your file, of course. Yeah, I've been but, that before. Um, so filing is basically the same. I don't know. Do you use an e-file? When you do? I usually actually hand file. You do? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So acrylic is a little bit harder as in texture mm-hmm. to file. You can certainly hand file. And there's some amazing nail technicians that hand file. Mm-hmm. E-files just make your job a little bit easier and you can get a little bit done a little bit faster. I would imagine, especially with acrylic, because it's a little bit harder. Yeah, exactly. Part of a product. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whenever I do gel, I never actually use the e-file because it's so easy to hand file. Mm-hmm. That's the beauty of it. So it's, it's like, a bit softer that way. Yeah, yeah, I love it. But when you're doing with acrylic, it is a bit harder. So doing um, the e-file does actually help. But when you're doing this, of course, you're just sculpting and you know how to sculpt. So mm. I don't have to really teach you anything about that. And there's no inhibition layer that we have to take off like we no, do with gel. So you can right. go right into filing. See, I'm such an acrylic snob. <laughs> I forgot about that. I like this. It's not sticky, so we don't have yes. to clean it. Okay. And that's one thing I got to tell you, I hate about gel. Do you? I'm getting over it. I, I respect the process. We use these little pads, these little cotton pads mm-hmm. when it comes to acrylic or cleaning the nail. Mm-hmm. But you can't use these on gel. No. You need to get a lint-free pad because you'll be driving yourself nuts with all yeah. the little hairs. But that's one thing I really had to wrap my head around when it came to gel is the stickiness. Yeah. I hate the stickiness. Well, and a lot of people don't realize that, that that stickiness is uncured gel. And so that's why we have to take it off. Right. Yep. That's right. Exactly. Yep. But, you know, once you get used to it, you you respect it. Yeah, absolutely. You respect the process. <clears throat> and that's where we come into the real, for me, the big difference is we're coming to that now, which is, of course, the sculpting is, is quite easy. Just like it is with the acrylic, it's great. But when you come into the finishing, finishing and gel is so different. And what I love about gel is the shine. Yeah. You cannot. And the clarity. You cannot get. Boy, this hand is weird. <laughs> I'm loving it, though. You can just rip I'd those rather fingers. A real which person. I know, yeah. right? Because it just feels like I have to hold her weight. Yeah, here. Yeah, which his client wouldn't really do that. Oh, it's weird. <laughs> so I'm just filing this to ship it up so we can get to the part where I just want to show you about yep. the finishing. Yep. So the file that you would use would be an 80 or a, a 100. Oh, that's much grittier than gel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
yeah. well with a 180, good point. you can get it That's right. A very good point. Yeah, yeah, with a little touch of a 180. I mean, I've seen people where they were acrylic artists before. Yeah. They whip out some yeah. gravel nail file, you know, and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You're going to take everything off. And sometimes yeah. they do. They end up taking everything off. Yeah, that's so true. So I'm just trying to get somewhat of a structure here mm -hmm. so we can have a nice little finished nail. It's interesting, too, because there's no powdery dust, you know, floating around. Oh, that's another great point. It's so great to have a gel <laughs> artist compare notes. This is so fun. Usually I've got a cloud of, yes, you know, I have right. to always have a dust vacuum. We don't have one. This is it is a finer dust again, being softer and it's a little bit lighter. Yeah. It seems to come up. This acrylic is a little bit heavier, so yeah, it, it just fall. falls right down. Yeah, I still wear a little mask hmm. because I don't want to breathe any little extra fine dust. But you're right, gel. I would definitely, definitely recommend a mask with that. Yeah, because it is a finer dust. Yeah, definitely mask or a dust vacuum. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, a dust vacuum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't use one on the set because it has quite a loud fan. Oh, you'd never. Yeah. yeah, and some are very quiet. Don't get me wrong. Some are really quiet. Yeah, but still, it's just too much noise. Yeah. I but want yeah. no noise in the back. Yeah, it's, it's him, you guys. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, in real life, though, if you're doing clients all day, every day, yeah, yeah. you definitely want to think about My that. My stomach growled once, and he was, what's that? <laughs> um, <laughs> be quiet. Yeah. Tight your stomach, be quiet. Yeah. But yeah, this is actually kind of nice, because if you were learning how to file, yeah. you'd be able to actually kind of practice more and more on acrylic yeah. without overdoing it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. I never mm -hmm. thought about it, actually. Yeah. Okay, this isn't about shape, so I'm going to get on with it. So we use the harder file for that. And then I'll use a softer file mm. to uh, smooth it over a little bit okay. before I put a gel application or a um, polish. I want to make it nice mm. and smooth for a polish. But here's the big difference between acrylic and gel. My favorite nail as an acrylic artist is an acrylic sculpted built nail with a gel finish. Mm. because we cannot get the shine that you can get with gel in acrylic. And I'm going to try my very best and show you what I'm talking about. So this file, they've come up with it. We try to get as much shine out of an acrylic nail as we possibly can. Mm. That's one thing is we just cannot get that shine or clarity. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of uh, clear products in the industry. The distributors of product or the manufacturers of product try to make it as clear as possible. Yep. And they do a great job. Don't get me wrong. And you can still use it as an over inlays and stuff. And you can still see your product, but it doesn't get quite as clear as gel. And you know that. Yeah, gel is yeah. just like glass. It really is. Yep. Now, which way would it go? It would probably go this black one first. Okay. So you're starting with the most gritty nail file. Yep. And then you're kind of going into smoother and smoother and buffing yep. and buffing. And you cannot cheat it. You cannot go from a hard file to the smooth file. If you skip those steps in between, you will see the scratches with a bare naked eye. Yeah, you cannot cheat it. I've tried. Wow. You know, when you're running late with a client, you're yeah. trying to hurry. You've got to do the steps. Yeah. So I'll go to the white one, which is, you can see it's a bit two. smoother. Yeah. And see, this is something interesting because a lot of uh, acrylic artists that I run into, they're so used to buffing their acrylic smooth because you have to, right? Yes. But then when they try and put gel on top of it, the gel doesn't have enough surface to grab onto. And so sometimes you'll have the acrylic nail and the gel just peels right off the yeah, top. Very, very true. Yeah. Gel needs a little bit of something yep. to hang on to. Yep. Nail polish likes it smooth, but it's Absolutely. not going to hang on as long as a gel would anyway. But you've got to have a little, it's got to have a little bit of grit yep. or a primer or something, something. in there. Yep. Yeah. So here we go. It's, and you can see this is about as shiny as you're going to make this oh, acrylic. Wow. And it's trying its hardest. Look at you that. You're actually it. just buffing the acrylic, yeah. though. Yeah, because I did the steps in between, right? So I'm trying to get a little shine there. And like this is like what they do in competitions when you have to yes. it, buff it to a mm -hmm. high shine. But I will tell you, 32 oh. years of being in the business, your shoulders can get... I would imagine. Oh, yeah. 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 That's my excuse for getting cameraman to bring in the groceries. My shoulders. My shoulders. My but it is true shoulders. there. I love what it. What about an e-file? <laughs> I'd um, my back here in <laughs> I love it. So, that yeah. is so crazy. Look at that, eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, me, I just would put gel top coat on that thing and call it a day. Me, being an <laughs> acrylic snob, I put gel top coat on it and call it a day. Yeah. Absolutely. So what we do in that case is we simply get rid of all the dust. Yep. And then we just put a top coat on. All right. But like I said, if I'm just doing all, uh, if I'm not putting any gel on mm -hmm. it, but I got to be honest with you, I love my gel top coat. Yeah. That was my introduction to gel was that amazing 
clarity and shine that you can get. Yeah. And that was my nails I did for years was an acrylic nail with a beautiful gel clear top coat. Mm -hmm. And then the colors came in, of course, and yeah. we all went crazy. So there you have it. I love it. You just built a nail. I sculpted it out for you, but Yay. I couldn't sculpt it if you didn't have the product there. Right. So you had everything, your knowledge that you have with building a nail, you, you put it in there. But you, I love it. You learned how to do the... My first good. acrylic nail. You should be proud. Yay. I'm going to high five myself. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> good job. Cool. I love it. Okay, I'm just going to give your model a little oil around oh, the yes, cuticle. Oh, yes, please. Get her camera ready. Yeah, that's right. I can't believe you taught me all of that so quickly. I can't believe you learned it so fast. You're a good teacher. You did. You're an amazing student. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Well, I'm really impressed what Elizabeth did, and I think we really broke down some important points between a gel expert and an acrylic expert. Thanks for joining us. Catch you guys in the next video. Bye.